So thank you so much, Ken, for joining us. Uh, please introduce yourself and, and what attracted you to your chair role with um, Mosaic LGBT Plus Young Persons Trust. Yeah, it is quite a mouthful, isn't it? We kind of <laughs> just normally call it Mosaic. Uh, so uh, what attracted me was, uh, well, you were involved because you'd called me up to see if I knew anybody who might be interested because my background was human resources and a particular focus on diversity and also been involved in a few LGBT organisations. And as you outlined what the job was, you said to me, do you know anybody who might be interested? And I said, yes, me. <laughs> and I don't think that was quite the why you'd called me, at least I suspect not. Uh, but it's been really interesting. I took it on six months before the start of COVID. And I took it on at a time when there were only three other trustees in place, uh, all white women, lesbians in their 30s. Now, in an LGBT organisation in London, that's not a typical board that you would expect and uh, that enters us with the, the most interesting problem we've had which was we appointed the new board a week before covid hit so we went for 18 months without ever having met as a board face to face It's not been the governance that's been the challenge, but rather, first of all, the board cohesion with not having met for 18 months face to face. It was really, really difficult, far more impactful than I would have thought. And we know that research shows that boards that socialize together make better decisions socialized together we'd never even met in the same room as soon as we could meet we met face to face we the original plan was a picnic on brighton beach and then one of the trustees who lives in brighton says come round to my house i don't want to present us as a bunch of lushes but i dread to think how much food we ate and how much we drank uh, but we bonded over it and in fact we've kept that up and we meet now face to face three times a year and at the end of the meeting we have a communal meal and we we, we do have a drink and we get to know each other and it's made a huge difference so in that getting together the biggest challenge that i faced initially hopefully isn't a challenge that people would face because they they would take my first piece of advice, which is get them together, socialize. Don't just have all your meetings on Zoom because you can do. And when you come together, leave time to socialize. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you're absolutely right. Boards that know each other peer to peer, you will make better decisions because you know how each other, how your brains work, how your minds yeah. work, what you may think about certain things. So in terms of my own chairing skills, I went out and asked chairs who I thought did it very well. What do you do? What advice do you have? And they gave me different pieces of advice. And there's, there isn't one piece that I go, this made the big difference. But in the context of what I was doing and the challenges in that board, they were really, really helpful. So the first thing I did was go and ask others. The second piece of advice I would have is one that I've given to myself recently, that I won't let the trustees who are new off the hook for what we expect in terms of their involvement and their time. Because I could take my trustee board and I could divide it down the middle between those who seem incapable of responding to email and don't make meetings that are supposed to but when they do make them, are absolutely worth their weight in gold. You know, so present and so good. And it's frustrating because 
They don't have either the time, I think it is more than the personal discipline. Then the other half of the trustees are the ones who are really involved and you really, really value them because not only when they're in the room are they good, but they're getting involved with stuff outside. And I've made the rule that the next bunch of trustees, as soon as I feel they're not making a difference, I'm not going to fall into that trap of going, well, they're new, you've got to, no, I'm going to pick the phone up and I'm going to say, look, here's the expectation. This was the commitment you gave, because trust me, they all committed to give the time. Is there a problem? And I think that would be my single biggest piece of advice. And I haven't even operated it myself yet, but I know I'm determined to do it because the difference that you get from those who are fully engaged all the time rather than fully engaged when they're present is huge. If I could get those fully engaged when they're present to be fully engaged when they're not, we'd have a powerhouse of a trustee board. We really would, because as individuals, the talents they bring are brilliant. There isn't anybody I wouldn't want on the board. I just sometimes want a bit more out of them. And talking to other chairs, they have that too. It's kind of, I did wonder whether it was because we were recruiting relatively young and relatively junior people, but I don't think it is. I think it's a mindset that you bring to it. And some people have the right mindset and some people have a different mindset that frustrates you a bit. Don't be a control freak. What do I mean by that? It's very easy as chair to say, particularly in a small charity, well, I'll pull the board papers together because I'm going to be chairing it and I need to be familiar with them anyway. And we don't really have a lot of people who ask about the finances, so I could have a go at doing that, and, uh, uh, and it grows. The role of the chair is to manage the staff and to manage the board and to keep in touch with the board and make sure that everybody is fully heard on the board and here's their point of view. And everything else is detail. And if you're short of time, then it's that other stuff that you delegate. Because you can't delegate talking to your board members to see where they feel about issues, how they feel involved, what are the concerns they have, what are the interests they have, what are they going to speak about or not speak about. Those can't be delegated. Everything else can be. If you're short of time, contract into my job's Managing the single member of staff. Don't lend yourself with managing more. That's the CEO's job. And secondly, managing the board and making sure that we've got the right skills and the right people and they're working well together. Well, well I think the thing about the chair is you get a chance to use the expertise that you've put together to drive the vision of the organization, not to set it, that's set by everybody, but, but to drive it and to push it. And, you know, I had a career in large international businesses. That's what I did all day, every day, made things happen. And it's really filled that gap for me since stepping down out of full-time employment to have something that I'm still driving forward on. And, you know, we run a youth service for young LGBT persons and go, you want a bit of motivation? Go talk to them. Go talk to them and hear about, I didn't know anybody else who was LGBT until I came here, or I didn't know anybody my own age uh, or, well, I told my mum and she was so nervous about me being lonely, she found the youth group or, or whatever. And then talk to them about the difference that it's made for them. It's phenomenal. That young person seeing they're accepted just because of who they are is so important to them.
you've got to see the impact, isn't it? That's what, that's why yeah. you join boards. You've got to see the impact. You have to. And once you've seen the impact, then the question to ask yourself is, do I think I have the skills to be a chair? Do I have the time? Do I have the energy? Do I have the enthusiasm? And do I have somebody I can talk to when I'm ready to scream at one of them who hasn't done it the way I wanted or disagreed with something I felt strongly on or all the frustrations that come in anything we do that we're passionate about? Because that's what we do. We recruit a whole bunch of passionate people and they get passionate and worked up about it. And so we don't fall out anymore. We've not fallen out on anything since we all started meeting together. We have some great conversations and we don't always agree. But what I would say is we talk it through and we reach a decision and we've been so much the better for being a group. And what I've learned is I actually don't have the answers to everything. And they don't expect that. They actually like to be asked. They join the board to be asked. So get them in a room because you don't always get an answer from them if they're not in the room. Get them in a room and ask them. And you'll get a great discussion. I love and the piece. I love that tasks. piece. I love that about not knowing um, all of the answers and not being expected to know. So if, if it's the, you're not expected to know, you're almost in some ways like a coach, kind of what else could we do? What else would we do? And teasing the ideas out of them which is why it's so important that you create an environment where people feel comfortable and confident to speak up. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Ken. I've really enjoyed speaking to you.